today's video, we'll be trying out the Ham Swan portable power station, and this is a 600 watt version. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to Random Fix. So over the years, I've tested a lot of different portable power stations, and I'm really excited to get my hands on this Ham Swan unit here, and this is a 600 watt version, as I really needed a portable power station because I moved to Texas and I want to be ready for anything. So I'm actually in my backyard here getting this ready for YouTube as I'm going to put solar panels and all kinds of cool stuff for future videos. But on this video, we're going to go ahead and focus on this portable power station. So I'm going to put this to the test. I have been using this for about the last 10 days so I can give you guys some honest feedback. And at the end of the video, I'll also give this a random fix tool grade so you can go ahead and make a decision for yourself. And here's what we're going to be testing this unit on. We're going to go ahead and power up two Ryobi batteries and see how well this does. We'll use our little meter here to see how well the electricity is doing and to see if the voltage is fluctuating. Then we'll go and try out this 400 watt heater here and Power up some of these accessories here with the USB cables. So we'll try all these out. And later in the video, I'll go ahead and try out the 12 volt port here. I'll connect it to the vehicle and I'll even show you guys what's included in the box. So to power on this unit is very easy. There's just a big power button right here. And that will go ahead and get the unit started. And to turn on these ports, you want to go ahead and hit this. And this is rated at 600 watts. But we're really going to go ahead and put this to the test. And this has a pure sine wave inverter built in. So I'm going to go and try this on some of my delicate electronics towards the end. For the DC or direct current out, there's a button right here. And every time you turn on a different component, it'll display for you the total wattage used, as well as how many hours you got remaining. So the longer you leave this on, the less power you'll have because these inverters take up power just to keep them running. So whenever possible, try to stick with DC. So we got two ports here, and this is just going to go ahead and plug right in. If you guys notice automatically, I can't get this in. So I'm going to have to go and put this in backwards. We'll still make do with this as I'm going to go and put this on the box here. So this is the box that it came in. And if you guys notice on the box, it doesn't have a lot of marketing. So this is going to be the unit right here. A lot of the technical specs for this are actually on the bottom of the unit. So if you flip this... This way, you'll see all the technical specs. And one of the things that you might notice is this is going to be a lithium ion battery, not a lithium ion phosphate battery. So these batteries do not do as well as the lithium ion phosphate batteries, which I've reviewed in previous videos. And this will go ahead and take a total input of solar at 100 to 400 watts at 36 volts. And I'll show you guys. A picture of this so you guys can go ahead and focus on any area that you think is important to you and on the DC side right here we have the 5 volt 2.4 amp ports the quick charge 18 volt ports and a USB-C rated at 60 watts then we have the two barrel connectors here at 10 amps 12 volts we also have the same power output right here in the cigarette lighter which we'll try out later 24 volt output i don't know what you would use that for but it's there we have the input here and we have the solar input as well and to go ahead and charge this unit you can do it two different ways straight out of the box one of them is going to be this power brick and i really don't like power bricks because it means i have to carry something else with me and this power brick has a total output of 88 watts so just know that it may take a little bit longer to go ahead and charge up this unit and in the car it might take even longer which we'll try out later and this just plugs into here and i'll show you guys the unit charging later in the video after we go ahead and drain it down because we are at 100 percent right now and other than the brick and the owner's manual you're also going to get this cigarette lighter wire here and it's not a very long wire and this plugs into that same port if you're going to go and use this in the vehicle which is really nice for 12 volt refrigerators and other low wattage components and these two are included automatically so you're not going to get any mc4 connectors 
or any other connectors in this setup here. So let's try out this Ryobi charger here. And everything looks normal so far. We are pushing out almost 88 watts. Let's plug in battery number two. And we're still at the same wattage. Maybe it's because of the charger. And if we were to continue this same sort of load, we would be able to operate this at 6.7 hours. Let me zoom in for you guys. So you can see that right there. Okay, so I've plugged in some more accessories. My phone is on rapid charge here. It's just showing rapid charge. I got the Nintendo Switch plugged in and everything is working as designed. And I'm gonna let this drain down a little bit. Currently we're putting out 107 watts. And the voltage is holding steady at 120.2 volts. Let's unplug this just to see what happens. It increases to 121.5. So the voltage is definitely not gonna be an issue. Now I plugged in the Ryobi straight into the unit without the power meter. And now I've connected the Nintendo Switch. And since this is a little bit limited on the watt hours at 642, if you wanna go and increase the usage, you wanna to try to avoid using the AC plugs as much as possible as they do not run as efficiently as this 12 volt system here. So keep that in mind. And currently we are at 108 watts and 5.4 hours of use left. With the Ryobi being charged, the Android being charged, the Nintendo Switch being charged, let's go ahead and try out the 12 volt accessory port here. And now we got an Amazon tablet being charged as well. Our power is at 116 watts and holding steady. So I've let this charge for a few minutes and everything is going as planned. There's no faults or anything else happening. So the unit is definitely working as designed. If you're looking for simplicity, this might be a really good unit, guys. And honestly, it has not given me any issues. And we're going to try and overload this and to see if we can find any additional faults other than the fact that the battery is not a lithium ion phosphate battery and there's really no app support. Let's go ahead and check out how the batteries are doing. So this battery is almost charged. This bigger battery is more than halfway charged. I'm going to go and unplug this. And with the Ryobi unplugged, I've gone through and actually plugged in this 400 watt heater here. So I know this is definitely going to put a bigger load on the unit as the display is currently reading 381 watts out. And as the unit warms up, the waters will drop. So we're still charging everything else. And so is the Amazon tablet. So these are all charging up just fine. And the heater's nice and hot. And I'm gonna go and let this run for five minutes because over the years I have discovered that a lot of portable power stations do a good job of getting something to turn on for the very first 10 to 15 seconds but then afterwards they'll go through and shut off the inverter let's let this run for five minutes and see what happens and we're putting out a lot of wattage as you can see we only have one hour left if we were to continue the same sort of load so five minutes has passed and the unit still operating just like it's designed heaters working now I'm going to go ahead and unplug the heater and we're going to do something a little bit more extreme. We're going to take this heat gun here and this heat gun is rated at 1500 watts. I'm not going to go and try to use this on the highest setting as I know that's not what this unit was meant for. But we're going to go and see if we can use it on the lower setting while we continue to go and charge up these other devices. as. The other devices are currently taking in only 22 watts. Heat gun is running. And the unit is putting out 803 watts. When I first started it, it was at 900 watts. Now let's try leaving the heat gun on for five minutes. So I have the timer running here. Heat gun is running. Everything else is charging. And the unit is not stopping and 
it is working. I've had a lot of units over the years that are rated for a certain wattage and as soon as they hit that wattage, the unit will stop operating and you'll see all sorts of error codes on the display. This is not the case here as I'm close to 800 watts for a unit that is rated at 600 watts and everything is working. This heat gun is super hot, everything's charging and I'm super impressed. Again, for simplicity, I really think it's hard to beat this unit. I'm gonna go and turn this off for a second and now we're gonna go to the highest setting on this just to see what happens. You can see it turned on for a second and went to 1100 watts and it stopped working. And to get it to work again, just wait five seconds and the unit will turn back on. If you do have an instance where it does not turn back on within five seconds, just go ahead and power the AC port on and off. This is super easy to use. Again, let's go and try to make this trip. I saw 1300 watts there for a second and the unit is now tripped off. I'm gonna wait five seconds and you can see it did not turn back on. To fix this, I'm gonna turn the AC ports off and you can hear the noise has gone away. There is a slight noise level when you do have the AC plugs running and it gets to a certain temperature, but it is not as bad as some other units I have used. I would give it a noise level of about two and a half out of 10 and the heat gun is working again. Let me go ahead and disconnect everything and we're going to go and try charging this in the car and afterwards we'll go and hook up some very sensitive electronics to this which one of them is going to be my laptop and I trust this unit to be pure sine wave as if it's not it may destroy my computer and I don't want that to happen so let's go and try out the cigarette lighter port. So the wire appears to be about three feet long. It does have a little light to let you know that you're receiving power. Hey everybody, um, I promise you I am not asleep, but this does not plug into here. I have tried and it is too small. It is not gonna work. So whatever power wire they sent me is not the right power wire for this. That's not the case with the power adapter for the wall but this car charger is definitely not going to work no go let's try this on my computers now really quick let me show you guys the difference in the size of the barrel so this is going to be the one from the power outlet and the one on the right is going to be the one for the car lighter port you can see that that is definitely smaller if you can see that while this is running let's see if this has passed through power so currently we are charging the unit however we have a load so if i unplug this my laptop should not experience any sort of power interruption and this seems to have passed through power i can't really confirm it so i'm going to go and let this go down to zero and then we'll charge this from zero to a hundred and see how long it takes it's really remarkable how much power one of these portable power station actually has for example i can supply enough power to all the electronics here for almost six hours even though this is only at a 60 percent charge this is a very very long time for me so i'm going to go ahead and use my little trusty heater here to warm up my room and also bring down the amount of time I need to wait to for this to go and drain down. At 4% the unit turned off and currently it's 505 and let's let this charge up see how long it takes. If the display is reading correctly, it'll take 7.3 hours to charge this unit up to 100%. We are charging at 77 watts currently. 
So almost three hours later, the unit has charged up to 43%. And it's showing that it would take another 4.3 hours for this to go ahead and reach 100% charge. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to the random fix tool grade so you guys can make a decision for yourself. Stay tuned. Now is my favorite part of the video. This is where I'm going to give the Ham Swan portable power station a random fix tool grade so you guys can go ahead and utilize this to see if this is the right unit for you. And I do want to thank the vendor for sending me this. And as always, guys, I'm going to keep my reviews honest and give you guys my final thoughts. So there's a lot of things that I like about this unit. I love the fact that it's simple. There's really not a lot of fancy bells and whistles and it delivers the watts that it states. So for a 600 watt unit, it was able to go ahead and put up at least 800 watts consistently. And the unit is very light, super portable. You could definitely carry this with one hand. And there's some things about the unit I wish they would improve. One of them is going to be this handle. I wish they would actually let the handle fold back so it has a little bit of a sleeker design. If they had some sort of wireless charger up here, that would be great. And there's no apps for this. And this is going to be one of those simplicity things that I talked about that it, when a unit is so simple, it actually has a lot of nice benefits as you're not going to feel overwhelmed. There's no USB-C charging. So we have a USB-C out but we cannot charge through this port. So there's a lot of units that have been on the market for over two years that allow you to actually charge through this port as charging is really the biggest limitation on this unit as I don't understand how this unit can get charged at 400 watts at 36 volts. But when we try to actually plug it into the wall through the brick, we're only able to charge it under 80 watts. This is really surprising to me as I think that the brick here is really limiting this unit if this can in fact handle the 400 watts and the battery in here is the lithium ion and not the lithium ion phosphate which tends to last a little bit longer and I'm going to go ahead and give this a final score of 53 out of 100 and I'm going to display for you guys the score here so you guys can see it for yourself and if there's something that I missed during this presentation please let me know what it is so I can go ahead and include it into future videos if there's a unit out there that you really like go ahead and comment down below but one thing I did want to mention about this unit is the price per watt hour is incredible honestly these units are getting so affordable that they're no longer costing five, six, seven, eight hundred bucks, you're able to get these for under three hundred dollars. So currently this unit is coming in at two hundred and twenty five dollars when you apply all the coupons and specials that they're running. That is actually a really good deal, especially given the quality of the unit. And there is a flashlight on the side, which I'm going to show you guys here because now it's nighttime. So you guys can go ahead and judge it for yourself. And it's pitch dark outside. Let's check out this light here. Pretty decent light. And we got an SOS mode. And we also got this flashing mode here. And if there is anything that you guys want to see in future videos, please comment down below as I'm getting ready to build a pretty cool solar system here at the house. And I'm planning on doing it myself, and I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks again. 